We welcome in, and I mean we really welcome in, Congressman Anthony Gonzalez, who represents the 16th Congressional District, which covers uh, parts of the west suburbs, Medina, Wayne, and Stark Counties. And I mean we really welcome you in, because I haven't had the opportunity to congratulate you on going to Congress. I can remember covering you at St. Ignatius in your football career and at Ohio State following you in the NFL. And congratulations. This is really a proud moment. Thank you. No, it's uh, it's thrilling to, to have the opportunity to represent the 16th District and uh, great to be with you. I, I could listen to you call Browns games every day for the rest of my life. Well, so. thank you for that. And I'll tell you, I think they're going to be pretty good games to call. Yes, they will. Tell me this. Was this always something that you wanted to do? Yeah, you know, I, I didn't necessarily know about the timing, but but yes, I always wanted to be involved in politics. I always knew I wanted to run for something. Uh, if you talk to my friends from college, you talk to Coach Trestle, they'd, they'd say, yeah, you know, we kind of knew this was, was in the cards. It was, uh, it was more a matter of when, not if. And so um, thrilled for, for the opportunity. Why now? Why did you decide? Why was it a good time to go now? You know, I think like most people in, in the region and across the country, I looked at our political system, especially in Washington, D.C., right. and thought uh, that's something that is clearly broken and in need of a lot of work. Uh, I, I tend to be somebody who goes towards the chaos as opposed to away, just kind of the way my, my brain's wired. And, uh, and so I thought this is the perfect time. All right, that's a distance look, but when you got there, when you arrive, how has it hit you? Uh, it's about as expected. <laughs> I would say, uh, Son of a gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It turns out, turns out I was right. It's uh, it is every bit as messy and and uh, chaotic as you would think. Uh, there are some kernels of of optimism for sure. I think mm -hmm. there's there's a lot of uh, younger. When I say younger, I mean in tenure, uh, newer members really who are. Uh, who are excited about getting things done and working together. Uh, not necessarily the ones who you see on TV all the time, but sort of your rank and file members. Uh, who are doing this for the right reason. It's exciting to be a part of it. All right, let's talk about what you're doing, okay? You introduced your first bill, February 28th, H.R. 1424. Interesting, the Fallen Warrior Battlefield Cross Memorial Act. Now, the bill will bar the VA from removing battlefield crosses from national cemeteries. Take us inside this. Absolutely. So my predecessor, Jim Renacci, uh, introduced this last Congress and, and got it pretty far. Uh, they just ran out of time. Sometimes that happens, and you have to reintroduce these bills. Um, but what this would do uh, is basically uh, allow us to pay tribute to those who have served our country and, and fallen in battle. For some reason, uh, those, those battlefield crosses were being removed. Uh, I'm somebody who believes we can never do enough for our veterans. Uh, and so this is a, a, a great opportunity to, to just pay tribute, a small gesture, but a very important gesture for those who served our country. And I think a lot of people would agree with you. Obviously, everybody in the Ohio delegation agreed with you. Yep. They signed on to it with you, right? Sponsored yes. it, co-sponsored. Yes, sir. All right, so tell me this now. Let's go locally. Tell us about U.S. Route 30 in Stark County. What's going on there? So this has been a project that's been a priority down in Stark County for a long time. And, and what this would do is widen Route 30 uh, and connect it to the main highway arteries that we have running all through the Midwest. And so uh, when you think about economic empowerment, I think one of the, the main things you can do is invest in infrastructure. This would be a very targeted, uh, important investment for Northeast Ohio, again, just to open up that corridor for our businesses to get up and down. When you got into it, and when mm -hmm. you obviously have to start listening to people who say, hey, listen, if I vote for you and you get there, this is what I want you to do. What did you hear from them? You know, the, the most that I heard was about just not being a part of the problem and being part of the solution. I think mm -hmm. people have an appetite for somebody who is willing to, to work with anybody across any aisle uh, to prioritize our community and, and do what's right for Northeast Ohio, put party politics aside, and, and let's just come together as one and move. Uh, that was the number one thing I saw and, and heard. Uh, and then from an issue standpoint, uh, you heard a lot about health care, and I think that's still the biggest one. Sure. And, and it's a big worry. I think oh, it's something, huge. I think people are really worried about. Yeah. Absolutely. No, and, and uh, you know, I, I don't think either party has solved this. And right. so, uh, so I want to be a part of, again, what, what message can we craft, what bill can we craft that's going to give certainty uh, to our constituents and make sure as many people are covered as humanly possible. That's my goal. Could you foresee everybody getting together, you know, maybe from both sides of the aisle and coming up with an answer on health care? Well, that's what I'm working on. So uh, I'm part of, of a handful of bipartisan groups that are working on different bills. And, and one of the, the areas I'm working on is health care. Another one I'm working on is infrastructure. Again, always in a bipartisan manner. I kind of took that example from, uh, from Senator Portman. If you look at all his bills, sure. they're, they're all bipartisan. He doesn't do anything in, in partisan fashion. Um, and I think that makes sense. That's what's durable. You, you want bills that have bipartisan support because then when somebody else comes into power, they're not trying to repeal them all the time. Is there more bipartisan play than we see? 
there is amongst the rank and file. Because let's face it, yeah. I mean, cable news at night, I mean, is boom, 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 <laughs> boom, right? But uh, maybe behind the curtains, is there more? Yeah, so you hit on a, on a good one, right? I think the two platforms that, that are highly polarized are social media and cable news. Yes. And, and the reason is the clicks for cash environment that we have. The right. more outrageous you are, the more angry you are, the more clicks you get, the more money you make. Uh, if you look at the rank and file members, again, I put myself in that category, uh, we're primarily there to work for things on behalf of our community. Mm -hmm. and, and in that sense, you know, I might have a lot in common with a Democrat from that state up north who prioritizes the Great Lakes like I do, um, you know, than, than somebody from a, a different region of the country. And so that's where you see a lot of bipartisanship. So I want to go over this. Now, you're also taking part in the Library of Congress's Veterans History Project starting the Thank a Vet Thursday campaign on social media with Northeast Ohio vets. So you're really uh, paying a great tribute and you don't want the vet forgotten. Absolutely, and this, uh, candidly, has been one of my favorite things that I've done as a member of Congress because I get to sit down with some of our vets, and we have unbelievable veterans in Northeast Ohio. We have a lot of them, and they have incredible stories. And you get to hear about their time in Vietnam. You get to hear about uh, the different places that they've been and, and the battles they fought on behalf of our country. Mm -hmm. And you know, without these stories uh, being preserved at the Library of Congress, they go away. Uh, and so. Uh, it's a big priority for me to make sure that our veterans are respected and that their stories are part of the American history for as long as possible. All right, you played football at the highest of levels, okay? And you played in big, big games, at, again, at all of the levels that you played at. Has that helped you kind of handle the stress and, as you've mentioned, sometimes the chaos that Washington can throw your way? I think it has. You know, yeah. you develop thick skin. So I was a, a first-round draft pick who... who <laughs> didn't uh, work out necessarily due to injury. I, I was out of the league within five years and uh, there weren't always the nicest stories written and so <laughs> you, uh, you, you kind of get, get accustomed to that and uh, you go through that process and, and honestly uh, I think my football experience, uh, in particular dealing with the media, really prepared me as, as well as anything for this job. Okay, um, it's election night, okay? You're waiting on returns to come in to see if you're going to win your, you know, your first test in politics at a very, very interesting level, okay? What was it like waiting for those results to come in to see if you were going to be victorious, as opposed to that Saturday afternoon when you played in one of the games of the century? Ohio State and Michigan both undefeated with a national championship, certainly a trip to the national championship game on the line in one of the biggest games ever. What was it like? Any comparison? Yeah, it's similar in terms of the emotion for sure. Uh, the pace is different, right? The, you go out and you, you play in the game of the century and you feel like you have control over the outcome and, and what you do on that day is going to determine win or loss, right? Yeah. Um, on election night, it's everything you did prior. So in, in that sense, it's almost like a boxing match uh, where you, you train, you train, you train, you train, you train, and you have that one event. Um, and so uh, I will tell you the other thing that was similar, uh, as soon as the outcome is secure right. and you find out you win, uh, the biggest weight ever just kind of comes off and you get to enjoy it with your family. Uh, gave my wife a big hug and kiss. Uh, we, we shed a couple tears together. Uh, we had our families and it was just great. Um, but then you realize the next morning that the weight is actually 10 times bigger because now you you have the opportunity you and the to, responsibility. And you have to deliver. To deliver, yeah, you exactly. Have to deliver. So. Um, that must have been a very proud day when you were uh, sworn in for you, your wife, your family, your parents. I mean, it must have been amazing. Yeah, it, it was special. You know, my, my father immigrated to this country from That's Cuba right. in 1960, and uh, my best friend growing up was my grandmother, his mother, uh, one of my best friends. And so um, to, to feel like you know, within one generation, uh, our family could come to this country, uh, contribute to our economy, and then serve in Congress. It truly is something that only happens in this country. It's a special, unique part of our country, right. uh, and so I'm very proud. Um, has it been everything you thought it would be, and uh, do you look and say, boy, I can get things done? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, like I said, there, there's reason for optimism, two reasons for optimism. Uh, one because the capacity for Congress to do real good work is there. This is an important job, it's an it's a important body, and we have the opportunity and the responsibility to do great work. So that's number one, reason to be optimistic. Two, the members that I have met on both sides of the aisle, again, rank and file members, the majority of the members are there for the right reasons. And when you have those two recipes, uh, sure, it's gonna be hard, it's gonna be frustrating and, and slow, because that's just how it works, it's how mm -hmm. it was designed to work. Um, but I think when you have those two ingredients, if you're committed to it, 
uh, I think you can get some good things done. Congressman Anthony Gonzalez joining us. Congratulations again. Really proud of you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim.